Hello Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. So um, I asked you guys in the last video when I was doing my tarot collection video um, what you wanted to see for an unfair comparisons as far as like um, as far as like particularly the new decks that I have and the best suggestion was from Rachel, the beautiful Rachel, who we've, oh, damn it, I just broke this fucking incense, damn it, <laughs> okay, oh my god, I just broke it again, okay, well, fuck that up, let's try again, the beautiful Rachel, like, suggested, I think she specifically suggested this pairing, and I was like, yep, that's the best one, so, um, a little backstory as to why I want to compare these decks together, To concentrate really hard to get this uh get this incensing right here okay let's light it so dark wood tarot and haunted house tarot so haunted house dark wood um are both like creations of sasha graham the art for haunted house tarot is by Mirko Pier Federici. I am definitely pronouncing that wrong, so apologies for that. And then the art for Dark Wood Tarot is Abigail Larson. For Tarot of Vampires, um, the art and the guidebook both are done by Ian Daniels, I believe. Oh no, I thought I wanted to go in there. Oh no. Okay. All right, I'm going to move this just so it's going to drop onto a little ashtray type device instead of the cloth. Okay, so the reason why I'm comparing Dark Wood to Dar Tarot of Vampires is because Dark Wood is what I wanted Tarot of Vampires to be. Tarot of Vampires is a recent repurchase. I did have it a long time ago, and there's some problematic imagery in here, which I'm sure I'll talk about when we get there. Um, for me personally, problematic. Um, Haunted House and Dark Wood both have. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this over. So even though I call this series unfair comparisons, there's a thread that goes through them. It's not really unfair in my mind. Like, yeah. So with both of these decks by Sasha Graham, the idea of the entire tarot deck is we follow this central character that is in the fool card through the setting of the entire rest of the deck so with haunted house tarot you're following this character which is named in the guidebook as raven wandsworth and in dark wood tarot you're following the fool character here which is referred to in the guidebook as the shadow witch um so in both of these cases, you're following a central character throughout the setting of the deck. And with Tarot of Vampires, it's, it's not that same situation, but um, I'm just comparing it here because, you know, these decks have similar themes. They're all very gothic. <laughs> They're all um, centralized around mythological creatures. And yeah, let's get into it. This guy, to me, looks like, oh, I don't know the actor's name, but the big Lebowski guy, like, not from that movie, but, like, in other roles, he has looked kind of like this, right? <laughs> Whoever that guy is. All of these are mass market, currently in production tarot decks that are easy to find. In the, just to give you like a little bit of a feel for the guidebooks here, all three of these have amazing guidebooks. For Haunted House, every single major arcana card has sort of like a little subtitle. So we have The Fool, Raven, Wandsworth, The Protagonist. Um, so here we are at High Priestess, The Eternal Witch. 
and then um, we'll get into it. But once we get to Pentacles, that is the legacy of witches, sort of the storyline for the Pentacles. The wands are the passion of vampires. The swords are the pondering of demons. I skipped over one. And the cups are the inspiration of angels. So we'll see that when we get there. For the um, tarot of vampires, this is a tarot deck that is based around like a thought system to a certain extent. And the guidebook is meaty and a lot of information in there. A lot of esoteric information, a lot of numerological information, a lot of astrological information. As the as astrology is like the symbolism of the astrology is on almost every card in this deck as well. And this deck is not numbered. Like as far as the major arcana, there are no numbers on the major arcana, which is just an interesting note. Um, with this deck, it's a low Scarabeo deck, so you don't even have a title, you just have a number. So in this case, just a number. In this case, number and title. In this case, just title. This haunted tarot of haunted house is like right now I'm reading The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson for the first time ever. And I just watched the series Haunting of Hill House. So I'm it's just like the perfect time for me to be like into this tarot deck. It's just like this tarot deck plus the series plus the book are just all like working for me simultaneously. This is the first or this is the deck that I'm really getting to know right now. Whereas with this one, I've had it for over a year now. And with this one, I have had it in the past and I'm really super familiar with this tarot deck. So like, this is the one I'm getting to know right now. Very different depictions of the emperor, right? There's a lot of rose imagery in this deck. Um, in the the symbolism is roses are secrets, the like sort of arcane symbolism of the rose in this deck. I like the idea of like your. This is from the perspective of someone that is getting an exorcism right now, right? I think that totally makes sense as a Hierophant card. And of course, y'all know, anyone that's watched this channel, this is like my favorite Hierophant card. Hierophant as tree. This one used to really bug me. I'm starting to make my peace with it, but just sort of the idea of like the woman in supplication to this ancient figure with cobwebs all over it. But, you know, I can work with it now. <laughs> A lot of sex going on in all three of these lover's cards. This kind of like looks like the guy from Placebo to me. Very different chariot cards, all three of these. Um, in the Tarot of Vampires, I believe that in the guidebook, strength is numbered at 11, but because there are no numbers on the cards and because I prefer to have strength at eight because I like the astrological order of Leo being in between Libra and whatever is before that. Cancer? Is Cancer before Leo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but these other two decks have strength at eight, so. I love the idea of like confronting yourself in the mirror as a strength card, and I love this strength card as well. <laughs> this one I would be fine with if it wasn't for I just feel like these boobs are really, like, I don't know, just unrealistic. Right? <laughs> I 
do sort of see the figure of the Fool slash Raven Wandsworth in a lot of the major arcana cards, but she's not like always there. But sometimes she is. Wheel, have you guys ever noticed that like Wheel of Fortune cards can sometimes just be like super fucking boring? <laughs> Like, I kind of like this one because we have, like, the hand and the spinning wheel motif. And then we have these four gargoyle-looking mini dragon dudes. <laughs> so I kind of, like, definitely that one's my favorite. And this one's okay because it's got all the different colored roses. But their placement isn't super harmonious looking to me, so it kind of distracts me. And this one just, I don't know, I don't like that one really. This one's kind of creepy to me, like, um, because in the guidebook it sort of suggested that this maid is kind of, like, she shows up in another one of the cards. I think she shows up in either the five or the seven of swords. I think it's the five. And, like, she's sort of, you know, portrayed as kind of an evil overlord kind of figure, which I don't love as a justice concept, but okay. And this chick, I don't know, she just doesn't look badass enough to me. Personally, obviously, this is all personal opinions. I remember the moment that I like realized how profound <laughs> the guidebook was for Tarot of Vampires. I was reading the description of this card. I don't remember exactly what it was about it, but... I actually really like all three of these death cards. Um, yeah. They're good in very different ways. This is one of the cards that I really missed whenever I didn't have this deck. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck. There's a lot of really, like, the art is really, really next level on both Tarot Vampires and Darkwood Tarot. I think. Oh, love this temperance card too. Hell yeah. It's really good. This is one of the most Sagittarius temperance cards, I think. Honestly. Like, it really just captures the essence of Sagittariusness, right? Um, like, I'm fine with sort of the, like, more kind of like forgiving angel aspects of the temperance card in a lot of decks, although none of these three are doing that thing. But I'm okay with like, you know, Virgin of Guadalupe as a temperance card or something like that. I'm okay with that. But at the same time, like, it's mixing the elements of fire and water, right? That's temperance. So there's like a certain amount of like, sacred rage going on in a temperance card which you don't usually see in a tarot deck. But you see it in those, kind of. I like the idea in the guidebook, it sort of mentions, I actually have it right here, so I'll just, I'll just pull it up. It mentions that this is Raven Wandsworth, like the dark side of her. Devil, Raven's shadow self. It enslaves the lovers with her jealousy. Perhaps she enslaves herself. Are you the devil or the victim? What or who holds power over you? I like that. This one kind of bugs me. I don't know. It's just like sometimes when I'm looking at the art of Tarot of Vampires, like all I can see is like a 14 year old boy drawing these images, you know? The mind of a 14 year old boy. Obviously, like the talent of the art that is created is, you know, slightly above that level, but. I don't love really any of these tower cards. Like this one's fine. This one's just like, I mean, it definitely gives you Mars energy. Like it's very like aggro dude. I don't know. Very, very bro. I don't know. 
<laughs> I just get like hyper masculine vibes with this one. Which, I mean, it's Mars energy. It's the tower card. This one, like the distortion of the image, like sometimes the proportions in this deck in Haunted House Tarot aren't the most beautiful things in the world, but for the most part, I really do love it. I think all of these are probably at this point permanent in my collection, I would think. This one's interesting though. Like, I don't know, like, am I getting star energy from this one? I don't know. The other two, for sure. For sure I am, but. See what I mean? Like with the astrology, like Ian Daniels really incorporates the astrology in every single card. Like she's wearing this Pisces symbol necklace. Um, now that I'm like to the point where I, I can recognize almost every astrological symbol, like it's helpful to me to have that in a card. It's helpful for me to like, I still don't know the astrology of every single card of all like the 78 cards, you know? I like this one too. The colors are gorgeous in this card. This is one of the cards in Tarot Vampires that bothers me. Like, not necessarily this one specifically on its own, but just the fact that like every single opportunity there is to have just like a sort of heteronormative sexy experience happening. Like, Sun card, Ten of whatever. Ten of Cups probably has that. Um, Two of Cups has that. Like, there's all these, like, people in the midst of taking their clothes off and, like, that kind of shit. Like, making out with each other. Like, why is that the Sun card? I don't know. I don't really like it. Personally, but whatever. All very different, like, judgment imagery. Here we have like sort of a rescue happening. Here we have turning into a vampire. And here we just have like you're being confronted with the moment of judgment by this character. You know, this brings you into the image kind of, but. The idea with this, the idea with this world card in Haunted House, I think is interesting. It's like, you know, after going through the horror of the Major Arcana in the Haunted House Tarot, you are presented with the key to the Haunted House. You hold it within you. I like this one. It definitely, like, holds the energy. Like, I expect to see, like, movement and energy and dance. And, you know, I would also like to see a lot of animal energy energy it particularly in the world card so this one's a great one because you can see I don't know if you can tell but there's a wolf up in the right corner top right corner and then we have a raven or crow in the top left corner and then you have this cat and then the snake so symbolizing the four you know the four fixed symbols that you normally see in the world card and the um wheel card as well. All great aces. Not really super into the whole cross imagery, but you know, like the candle, especially because to me this looks like an older hand lighting the candle for a person, for a younger person. I love this like Ouija board situation going on with the two of wands here. And the witch. This is... Like, but you do have the Aries symbol, you know? Like, on his belt right there. And you also have... Um, I think this is a Mars. So Mars and Aries is what the Two of Wands is. So you get both of those symbols here. Kind of like you do in the Thoth Tarot. This is really cool because if you follow like the story of the wands, it's basically like the, this is like the Raven Wandsworth character, I'm assuming. So she's kind of like at this point in the three of wands, she's going down the stairs to investigate a noise. 
and you can like go through the wands with that idea of like um she's kind of investigating the noise herself and then she fights sort of the demons and the ghosts and the spirits herself and all of that which is cool This looks like one of my friends. Like there's a bunch of people in this, in Tarot of Vampires, Tarot of Vampires especially, that remind me of people in my life. And this was interesting because like she goes down the stairs to investigate the noise and this is what she finds. She finds like people in masks and hoods doing a weird like ritual or something. And then they kind of come after her starting the five. It's hard to do like a comparison like this because I'm trying not to make it super long because whenever I have long videos, it takes like sometimes literally days for the video to upload. So I'm trying to keep it somewhat short, although we're only halfway through the wands and I'm already 20 minutes in, so. So she's really fighting back against the forces that she investigated and are coming after her now. <laughs> it's, it's, I like the, I don't know, Sasha Graham's like s form of storytelling I do enjoy. And I would recommend her Magic of Tarot book, particularly if you're a beginner and you like sort of like fantastical language, like because she she tends to repeat herself in her writing. However, it's really accessible as well. So like, you know, if it's particularly if you're into like a lot of like more like heavily intellectual sort of esoteric type writings about tarot, you might not like her book, Magic of Tarot, but like if you like somebody that's just really conversational with you, but also like puts, I mean, it's called the magic of tarot. Like she really talks about the magic of tarot. She really does. And she encourages you to kind of find your own definitions for things, which I like. Um, I don't know. I just, I like her vibe in general. So I love both of these tarot decks partially because of her. You do get quite a lot of like energy happening with all three of these cards, right? Like, what is happening here? Like, it just looks like she's posing to me. Which is unfortunate. This one I really like, though. This one bothers me because, like, I don't know, like, her butt looks really unnatural to me. Plus, um... Whenever I point that out to my Michael, he's always like, uh, her neck is broken. Like, that's the thing you should be focusing on. Her neck is unnaturally broken. <laughs> this one's interesting to me, just sort of a ten of wands as a being burned at the stake concept. I don't know who said this. I was watching someone's video where they said that this look like looks like David Duchovny and I kind of agree. I love the bats. They're really beautiful with sort of like these pale gr bluish gray tones and these purple tones. Like this artwork like, if particularly on screen, like, you might be thinking, wow, this artwork is so fucking cheesy. And it is. A lot of the time, the artwork in Tarot of Haunted House is super fucking cheesy. But overall, it's actually really beautiful in person a lot of the time. Like, it's, it's well done, at least. Like, the textures 
really work. Like if you get up in there, like can you see how this works? It works, it really does. It's a gorgeous deck and I'm liking it a lot. And I can't believe I didn't have it until now. All three of these Queen of Wands are super, super like fiery bitches. I love it. This one to me, like more the expression on her face than anything looks like Anya from Buffy. I don't know what it is, but it looks like Anya to me. So the um, theme in, in Tarot of Haunted House for the wands is Passion of the Vampires. So it's interesting to me to think of the King of Wands as like a predatory vampire type. Like, that makes sense to me, actually. <laughs> totally. There's a very cohesive color scheme in each of the suits for tarot of vampires. Like it's all these like sort of sickly emerald slash olive something in between emerald and olive greens in the grails suit. This one in the guidebook, it mentions that this two of cups is Raven meeting with the knight of cups. So that's interesting because you will see this particular figure. So the cups in the Tarot of Haunted House are, um, I just spit on the card, are <laughs> angels and this deck. See what I mean? Like he's in the process of like taking her fucking clothes off and like, I don't know. I mean, I guess the majority of human beings are sexual creatures, so they're probably into that, but I don't like it. <laughs> My asexuality is showing. It's a really interesting Three of Cups, sort of like the idea of like drowning while being around other people at the same time, you know? It's kind of how I see that. This one bugs me because it just like looks like a couple of chicks that are like hanging all over some dude. Like that's not the three of cups for me. No, thank you. I'm not sure how this is four of cups. She's getting bit, but she doesn't care that she's getting bit. Is that what we're going with? She's apathetic about her life, so she's fine with being killed right now. I don't know. <laughs> I like this one though. Sad mermaid. Sad mermaid. Sad bunny. Sad human. <laughs> we were trying to find, like Michael and I were looking through tarot vampires the other day and we were trying to, he really wanted to find Claudia from, um, you know, Interview the Vampire. And I think this is the closest thing that we get to Claudia in this deck. Which makes sense as a Six of Cups, right? If you think of it as Claudia. What is happening here? I'm just dancing really sexy next to my pot of blood. <laughs> How is that a Seven of Cups? Uh oh, sometimes. Sometimes images in this deck just really fucking piss me off and I have to put it away. But I do think it is a worthy deck in general. Like, because I got it again. I fucking bought this thing twice, you know? It's just sometimes it's like, what does this have to do with anything? Like, what is this guy in a weird mask with his arms chained together holding a cup have to do with the Eight of Cups. I don't know, but whatever. And this, like, ah, uh, the boobs. I, the boobs, okay? I feel like Ian Daniels, if he had, if he remade this deck now, he would hopefully have been better 
and making boobs. Because <laughs> some of the boob shapes that are happening in some of these cards is like, I don't think you know what boobs look like, honey. <laughs> this, okay, this is a pet peeve of mine. Whenever a deck, and this is not the first time I've seen this, there are two cards in this deck in particular that do it. Um, and there are other decks that I've seen that do this thing where they will take the image from an RWS deck and somehow incorporate it into the imagery of the card in their deck. And it just, it always looks clunky to me. Like I haven't ever seen it look good. This one just like looks really fucking cheesy to me. Okay, don't want to put that over. I'm getting this all mixed up. I'm putting all this shit in one pile over here, which means I'm gonna have to separate it later. So, the cups are angels in Tarot of Haunted House, so all of the core cards will be angels. Just so you know. She's really beautiful. Just like the art is so fucking good sometimes in Ian Daniel's work, but then other times I'm like, Mwah. She kind of looks like Buffy to me. A little bit, a little bit. It's the eyebrows and the nose mostly. And this one, looks like a younger version of Giles from Buffy. Do you think? To me it does. And I'm totally fine with him being King of Cups. I can handle that. This, to me, is kind of Louie from Anne Rice. This is Louie. He looks real broody. And Louis was supposed to have black hair, I think, in the books. I think he was, even though he was played by Brad Pitt in the movies. Or in the movie. It's so powerful. So the swords are knives in Tarot of Vampires. Oh wait, what did I do? Where's the two? Okay, here we go. Actually, I really like this one. I'm not usually a big fan of blue, but I do like all the blue in this card and like the contrast of the red blindfold. And I like this one too a lot. the idea with the, what is it? Something about demons in Tarot of Haunted House for the swords. Let me find it. The pondering of demons. <laughs> the entire suit doesn't seem to be super like consistent as far as like it being like a, well, I guess it, it is because these are like demon arms coming up but it's particularly evident in the court cards that you're dealing with like demons, angels, vampires, or what was the other one? Witches. I love this one. It's just like so much happening here, like holding hands with a statue in the cemetery. And then you have this sort of slain um, crow or blackbird at the bottom here. I don't know. Sorry, my phone isn't focusing super well because it's late at night and I probably shouldn't be doing this with this particular lighting scheme, but whatever, here we are. So here we have that maid again. So there's sort of like a, you know, women harming women vibe in both of these Sasha Graham decks. So she must just see the five of swords in that way. This one's scary to me. Although at the same time, like, you know, you could think of 
different ways to view this. Like maybe this sort of black angel is actually guarding over this unconscious woman so that nothing bad happens to her. <laughs> That's the way that I'd like to see that. How is this six of swords? You know, I love a, I love a good raven, but how is this six of swords? This guy is just sort of like looking at you while holding a knife. Like, what? I need more than that. I don't know. That's just me, though. This actually looks really good. How was this seven? I don't know. Just because... <laughs> What is, what is the, the scenario here? Like, maybe she's delicate. Maybe she's not. <laughs> maybe she's not as delicate as she looks. These are all pretty good, though. This, to me, Tarot Vampires, Ten of Knives, to me, looks like um, Deanna Troy from Star Trek. Next Generation. This card is like bent. I just got it and it's like, do you see that like crease in the card? Oh well. It doesn't really affect it and you can't even like see it on the back. Well, you kind of can, but it's not that bad. I like the these other ones though too because I like that she kind of looks like she's hovering so it almost looks like and she kind of looks like she's in ecstasy so like this ten of swords ending is actually a liberation for her and here you have the hopefulness of like the sunrise or the sunset on the horizon and like this person is looking towards it I like to see a little bit of hope in my Ten of Swords because I don't think of it as an entirely bad thing. I love this Daughter of Knives. She just looks so fucking cool with her boots and her lacy tights. Yeah, I want to be friends with her for sure. And this looks like Mila Jovovich to me. <laughs> this is my card of the day today, actually. And this is the chick that was fighting the devil in the devil card in this deck. I like him. I love the idea of the knight, a knight of swords having like a crow companion and just like, I just, I just like this guy. He looks cool. <laughs> and this Queen Amidala looking chick, the demons in the, in the court cards and Tarot of Haunted House, like just have like these weird little dots on their faces or something, which I'm fine with. Like, queen of swords hanging out in the library and she's a demon yeah i can get behind that for sure i like that she has like a crow companion for sure and the fact that he's a king of swords like playing chess like yeah i want to know that guy for sure this guy seems fine this kind of reminds me of Lestat. Like, this is what Lestat looks like in Anne Rice to me. Just sort of this, like, petulant child energy wearing, like, really fancy clothes. Like, that's totally Lestat right there. Lestat. Lestat. Got a purple energy in the pentacle slash skulls. And tarot vampires. <laughs> we were looking at this, um, I was looking at this deck with Michael the other day and he was like, that's not how mirrors work. <laughs> it was funny. This is another one is like, I'm just holding on to this thread here in a sexy pose. Can you see my nipples? How about my landing strip? 
like sometimes it's just too fucking obvious who drew the imagery hetero dude and I'm sorry that I'm being an asshole towards hetero dudes I do live with one I chose to spend my life with one so I don't think they're all bad <laughs> and this like I'm just leaning against this wall here no big deal this guy's protecting me <laughs> Oh my god. I kind of hate all three of these five of pentacles, honestly. Because what, where, where did these tarantula creatures come from? Like, nothing else is like this card in this deck. And this one, like I've said before, it just looks like this chick is running away from that guy. And this one, I guess, you know, yeah, this is a... I guess I guess I'm okay. I can handle this one if you compare it to the other two because it's like okay this chick, she's definitely a low moment in her life. She's just been preyed upon by this werewolf guy. It's definitely a Five of Pentacles moment. But now she's sort of come back and she's starting to transform into a werewolf herself, right? Like if you think of it as the same person. Okay, I can get behind that. I kind of like this like hanging out with the rats situation going on here. I love a good rat. Love some rat imagery. I'm fine with it. This one looks cheesy to me. I don't know what it is. I just, it's too much. I really like this image, but at the same time, it's like, how is this Seven of Pentacles? I don't know. I love this one though. Sleeping with the zucchini. Definitely some willow vibes going on in the pentacle suit of Tarot of Haunted House. Like, this doesn't like specifically look like Willow, but it has a Willow vibe, you know? Because she's doing some dark magic right there, for sure. And I guess he's doing dark magic too. I love all three of these. All three of these. This is like one of my favorite cards in this deck, actually. I mean, she is just like a really beautiful person posing in a cemetery, which is the same reason that they dislike a lot of cards in this deck. But in this particular case, uh, A, her boobs don't bother me, and B, posing in a cemetery is the right vibe. For the nine of pentacles you know <laughs> totally and i don't know if i have any other nine of pentacles cards that are posing in a cemetery that's probably the only one again see what i mean like this just looks terrible to me you just took the ten of pentacles card and you threw it in front of a wintry setting like no try again <laughs> this is a first draft <laughs> See? Willow vibes, right? We got this little rat down here, and a cat, and another cat, and a couple of owls. Total willow vibes right here. Actually, this, like, it looks like a combination between Willow and Tara. I like both of these guys. And in both of these Sasha Graham decks, we have the Knight of Pentacles hanging out with an owl. I don't really like any of the lords in this deck. At all. She looks like Jennifer Love Hewitt to me. Do you guys see it? Michael's like, no, I don't see it. Do you know what Jennifer Love Hewitt looks like? But this to me looks like Jennifer Love Hewitt. I like that she has a wolf familiar, though. 
not that I have a problem with Jennifer Love Hewitt, it just kind of takes me out of it whenever, like, I for some reason immediately recognize, like, somebody in something. That's a whole other conversation about artist intent that I, like, feel like I might want to have with you guys at some point, but I don't really know how to articulate it properly. I really don't like this guy. He bothers me. He's okay. He's okay. There you go. That is my unfair comparisons of Tarot of Haunted House, Dark Wood, and Tarot of Vampires. I hope you enjoyed that. If this takes motherfucking three days to upload, I'm blaming you guys. All of you. Okay. See you later.